You are now listening to the most talked about blog talk radio station in the universe. Walk in his ways, Impact Voice Radio. Be prepared to have your mind stimulated, your spirit elevated in ways you couldn't even imagine. Introducing your host and the mastermind behind this unforgettable experience, Furman Jackson. Junior, you will not be disappointed. Let's go! Today is Tuesday, May 10, 2022. Welcome to another episode of Walking This Way in Fatboy Podcast. Our motto is Shaping the Culture, Building the Generation. I'm your host, Furman Jackson Jr., along with Anna C. from Mobile, Alabama. Coche from Dallas, Texas, and Kenny Primetime we from Ocean Spring, Mississippi. Our guest tonight is recording artist Nikki from Mobile, Alabama, but now living in Dallas, Texas. Big shout out to Big D, of course. Mobile just taking over Dallas. I just want to tell you that. She has a few singers out. That's a well, a few singers that are available, which is called um, which is Rock Your Body, Higher Place, I Grown, High Feel. Just to name a few. And you can check out her music on different media platforms. We welcome you, Lakeith, to walk in this way in Fat Boys Podcast. We thank you for taking time out to read the schedule. Introduce yourself here to, on the podcast. And after that, we're going to get off into some financial tips with Anna C. We're going to get off into some sports news with Kenny. And then we'll get off into some entertainment news with Koshe. So introduce yourself to the audience. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited. First off, Thank y'all so much for having me today. <laughs> I'm super you. excited and I'm like really thrilled. So yeah, I moved to Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm awesome. here to Dallas, but I'm Lakey and I am a singer, songwriter, um, mother of two lovely kids. I Yeah, that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. We got some Q&A for you, of course, with our conversation week. Before we get started with that, we're going to kick it off with Anna C. with the financial tips. So, Anna C., kick it away with the financial tips for the week. Good yeah. evening. Good evening. It is Anna C., the spending plan specialist, financial planning at your fingertips. So, y'all know we have been talking about getting out of debt, creating wealth, and protecting it. So, tonight, we're going to talk about another key factor when it comes to building your financial future, estate planning. So once we get out of debt and we start creating this wealth, we need to start setting up generational wealth, breaking generational curses, and setting up a legacy for those who come after us. So I'm going to go over just a little bit and some basics to help you know. So pull, pull, pull out your pen and paper and take some notes while I stumble over this, y'all. So the first thing that you need to know is the difference between a will and a trust. A lot of people say, well, which one is which? Which one should I have? So I'm going to give you the rundown, basically. A will is a legal document that's going to spell out how you want your affairs to be handled and distributed upon your passing, right? A trust is an arrangement that gives a trustee a legal guardianship over your assets, what to do with it, who to give it to, allocate it to a specific person or purpose. So let me break that down just a little bit more. So if you have a will, it's a high level set of instructions. Typically you use a will to say, who's gonna be the guardian of your minor children or who's going to be the executor of your estate, okay? You can leave assets in a will, but this is not the most efficient way. And a lot of times people say, well, I think a trust is for those who are uber wealthy. Well, the secret is that's not true. All right, let's break that myth, okay? It's not true. You should get you a trust. The reason why you should get a trust, a couple of reasons is because if you have a will, it can be used in probate court. It gives the judge guidance in regards to making decisions about your assets and belongings, but ultimately, 
it can be contested, and they do not have to oblige your final wishes. The probate process can be long, drawn out, and costly, okay? But I also want to throw in there with a trust, you can bypass probate, okay? And the assets will go directly to your heirs. So if you have a trust, you have more control over your assets, your belongings, your final wishes way after you're no longer here. Now, keep in mind, both are very effective and they're both better than having nothing in place at all because we see it every day. You have celebrities who don't have estate planning, who don't have a will or a trust. And we see it in our local communities when cousins, sisters, brothers are fighting over what's left. So definitely have a plan in place. Another way that you can transfer wealth is through retirement accounts that have a beneficiary and life insurance. If you use these vehicles, you can transfer wealth tax-free. Keep that in mind. You can avoid estate planning tax, all right? So you want to make sure you have your retirement accounts in line, your investments. You want to make sure you have some insurance, make sure you have your beneficiary set up and get you a will and a trust or at least a trust and set out some specific guidelines to leave a legacy behind for your loved ones and those who are to come, right? Let's create a future. Let's create some generational wealth because those who fail to plan, they end up in devastation. So I just wanted to give y'all a couple of tips about that and make sure you review your investments, your insurance, your will, and your trust periodically especially after major life events. We see things like the sudden passing of Kobe Bryant. When he passed, he did not update his will when he had his last babe. And so they had to go to court to fight to get her added until his, into his will and his trust because she wasn't added. So when you have children, new babies come along, new missions, new charities, or a new spouse, <laughs> a new beginning, Make sure you're updating your information and you want to check on your investments as well to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing for you. So that's your financial tip for today. Talked about estate planning, the difference between a will and a trust, how to avoid probate and how to transfer wealth tax free. Awesome information. Thank you, Anna, with that great financial tips for the week, of course. And we know sports is always lovely. We love sports. I know I love sports. Football season is ready to come up as well. I'm a big Dallas Cowboy fan. I've been a Cowboys fan when I was back home in Mobile, Alabama. And I'm still ripping them boys, win or lose. Everybody want to be a star. So, Kenny, take it away with the latest sports news and updates. We know we got the NBA playoffs going on here. Um, we know the Mavericks. I'm not a Mavs fan, of course, but we know the Mavs are in the playoffs. Everybody loving it here in Dallas for the Mavs in the playoffs. But, Kenny, take it away the latest sports news updates. My pleasure, Mr. Jackson. How is everybody doing out there in the land? Welcome to the Prime Zone. I'm your host, Kenny Primetime Williams. I'm so glad to be here with you on this Tuesday evening. We got a little news for you this evening from the sports department. But, hey, I want to give shots out to the city of Dallas, Texas, Mississippi Gulf Coast, Mobile, Alabama, my hometown, Ocean Springs, Mississippi, by way of Greenville, Mississippi. Everybody is listening to the sound of my voice. Thank you for tuning in. We're going to get into it, but breaking news coming out of our HBCU, ladies and gentlemen, Grambling State University head coach has now, is now being investigated because got hired and she stripped every volleyball girl's scholarship. Everybody on the team was stripped of their scholarship, leaving kids to find out where they're going to pay their tuition at, <clears throat> how they're going to get by, how they're going to get ahead. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that was a big, big deal this afternoon. Uh, breaking news came about, and we're going to wait to see how the investigation turned out. But I, I really looking great things for these girls of the volleyball team because they already had scholarships, and for a coach to come in and strip you of your scholarship, taking away your education. And what you love to do is totally unacceptable in my eyesight, and I hope to be the same thing for you guys, too. Well, as Mr. Jackson said, the NBA playoffs is well aware on the road and in effect. A lot of great games are going on. Matter of fact, as we speaking right now, the Miami Heat and the Philadelphia 76ers are in action right now. 
And after that, the uh, uh, Dallas Mavericks will be playing the Phoenix Suns. Every team, every series, every game is almost comes down to the wire. Last night, uh, the Grizzlies um, took on the Golden State Warriors. And when um, it came down to the wild step, Curry stepped up, making him the first player to only to make 500 threes in a playoff. That's a big milestone, and he's a great player. But uh, the Warriors taking a commanding 3-1 lead over the Memphis Grizzlies. Next game will be tomorrow night in Memphis. John Morant has a bone bruise, and he is doubtful for the rest of the series. So we will be sitting back hoping that he can come back and help his team progress, progress and also get ready to uh, try to beat these Golden State Warriors. I'm actually rooting for the Memphis Grizzlies, man. They're a great team, great young team. Great coach, great personnel, and I just like the team all itself. My team is actually the Lakers, but if I had to choose a team right now, it would be the Grizzlies. So uh, big up to the Grizzlies, and we're going to hopefully they come back in this series and do a great job. Now, Tom Brady, the GOAT, ladies and gentlemen, not to mention that he's had he has seven Super Bowl rings, and he has all the accolades in the world. But today... Tom Brady has agreed to become the head lead analysis for Fox Sports News when his career is over with. And that deal comes with a five-year, $345 million deal for five years. Tom Brady, leading analyst for Fox News. I don't know about y'all, but I would have not played this season and went on ahead and went to Fox right then and there. But he said he had unfinished business um, to take care of. So I understand how he feels about that as a player. But, uh, yes, his deal is worth five years, $345 million. He is set for life, rich for life. And uh, I send my congratulations to uh, Mr. Tom Brady, the GOAT. I give him much respect. But my quarterback is still in Dallas, Dak Prescott. I give him all the credit as well. But uh, got to get credit where credit is due. And also Mike Tyson. Everybody's seen it on the uh, internet and seen it around the news. Mike Tyson was on an airplane uh, punching the crap out of a, uh, a passenger, bruising them up pretty bad. But Mike Tyson will not be charged. Um, the DA dropped all charges this afternoon, so Mike Tyson is clear and free of all charges. And he is free to go, and the guy just left with a black eye that was on a plane and got hit by Mike Tyson. That's pretty something to say. You walk around your friends or family say, what happened to your eye? Mike Tyson hit me. So, you know, it wouldn't be so bad if you like Mike Tyson hit me. But, uh, and we have one last news for this evening, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, NBA MVP, Nukla Nokilia, Jokic, they call him the Joker, has won MVP in the NBA for two consecutive seasons. He has done an amazing job. Joel Embiid was coming right behind him, but, um, he walked away with an MVP for the second consecutive year, so congratulations to him. I'm happy for him. He's a great player. I think he, he belongs on the Lakers uh, instead of the Denver Nuggets. But anyway, <laughs> that's all my news I have for you today. Still tune in for the NBA playoffs. Watch your favorite team. It's very exciting. If you don't have anything to do, sit in front of the TV. I guarantee you, you will be entertained first through the fourth quarter. I love you. God loves you. There's nothing you can do about it. And I'm going to give it right back to Mr. Jackson. On you, bro. Hey, appreciate your prime time with latest sports news updates. And we know that the playoffs are very crazy. Uh, injuries, yeah. dirty hits, um, yeah. family members getting it, getting it um, touched and everything. It's been very hectic with the NBA uh, playoffs. The fans getting out of hand. Man, the fans getting out of hand, period. Recently, Dave Chappelle got attacked on stage. Yeah. That dude ain't going to do that no more. His body got the brakes off him. Yeah, he, he did. He, he really did. So it's really like did. it's crazy out here, man. Just be mindful, be careful. Also, Dak Prescott um today, Kenny was at a mental health um event today, and uh -huh. I missed it because it was two events going. I went to one event that they had Maya there, and uh -huh. Dak was at another event for the mental health thing. And I missed it. I wish I went to one. We got a chance to meet Dak Prescott. Yeah, we probably could have got Dak if you'd have went to that. If I was in Dallas, I'd have went to that, and you'd have went to Maya, and uh I'd have had I'd try to get get Dak on the show, but. Don't worry, audience, for all millions of people that's watching, we will have a Dallas Cowboy on this podcast. I, I guarantee know, right? you that. 
I know it's right, before the season gets started. Absolutely. And before we get off into the Q&A with our future guests tonight, we got entertainment news. Coach Shea go here with the entertainment news. We know we got a lot of stuff that's been going on in the news, of course. So Man, take it away. Y'all know I'm about ready to give it to y'all. Hello, everybody. My name is Coach Shay. I am here with this celebrity tea, per usual. Okay, y'all. It, it, it just saddens my heart to say that we lost one of the most controversial YouTube and Instagram sensation. I mean, Kevin Samuels. He was a sweet tender age of 56 years old. Allegedly, they are saying that he died from cardiac arrest. Autopsy still has not came back yet to prove that this is true or not. But we also know that he wasn't the healthiest. <clears throat> um, he really had a thing for um, sports drinks. He loved drinking his Red Bulls. He loved going out to eat. So my man's wasn't really the healthiest, uh, even though he was thin. Thin don't always mean healthy, y'all. So my man's wasn't the healthiest. They're saying that his heart gave out on him. Also heard rumors that they are taking up a GoFundMe. So y'all be careful about this GoFundMe that's going on. They're trying to say that Kevin Samuels was broke. I really don't think he was broke. Um, it's estimated his net worth was around $4 million when he uh, died. So... I don't think this man was broke. I just think that just like uh, Anna was kind of explaining that he just didn't leave his things to anyone. He didn't have any, any trust or wheels or anything. Um, that just might be his situation. He just didn't leave anybody anything. Uh, and other news, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Johnny Depp and Amber Heard have been going at this case for about almost a month now. Um, and it's nearing its end. They are saying that neither one of these people are going to win. They are over it. <laughs> the judge is over it. The, the jury is over it. They're saying neither one of them is probably going to win this case. They're trying to sue each other for defamation of character. Johnny Depp is saying that the allegation that was placed upon him is not true. And she's saying, how are you going to say that? It's not true. You've been doing this to me for all these years. She just doesn't have any proof. She don't have any 911 calls. She doesn't have any medical records. She just really has no proof. Um, so they both probably will not win this case. He probably has paid these lawyers all this money. Um, they're suing each other for 50 million that neither of them probably will see. In other news, Young Thug is being accused of giving permission to YSL, which is their little gang that they got going on, um, to stab YFN and Lucci while he's incarcerated. YFN and Lucci is saying, please, somebody help him. Get him out of the jail. He don't need to be there because they is conspiring to kill him. As we all know, <laughs> YFN and Lucci has been incarcerated for a while now. He's, the charges that he's facing is racketeering charges. Um a murder felony, which he actually pushed somebody out of the vehicle, y'all. It, it was a murder happened. He pushed his friend out of the car. It was crazy. Um, the possession of a firearm, um, and he went against uh, the state's anti-gang law. So wherever he was, he went against the anti-gang law. He ain't supposed to be gang-banging. He's a blood gang member. Um, and before he was incarcerated, he was allegedly dating Lil Wayne's daughter, Regina. So she kind of dodged the bullet. She broke up with him right in time. Now he he just, he, he done ruined his life a little bit. Um, they actually might be considering letting him be in house, in house, at his house, 24 hour surveillance um, because he's fearing for his life. Th that definitely is um, some celebrity thing going on. But definitely if you're watching this on um, YouTube, I definitely want to know how did you feel about Kevin Samuels' death? I was appalled to see all the people that were celebrating this. So definitely tell me how you felt about it. I might not agree with everything that he said, but I did respect the fact that he was very opinionated, that he opened up a lot of dialogues between us brothers and sisters on a different level. So I did respect him for that. I respect people that's opinionated and I respect people that cause disturbances, cause disruptions in the industry. Um, so I definitely much have much respect and salute uh, to Kevin Samuels. And that's all I have for this celebrity tea for today. Appreciate you, Coach Chef, the latest entertainment news, of course. And once again, we are back with y'all here on this lovely 
to tonight on Walking This Way to Impact for the Podcast. Very excited to be back with y'all once again. We know everybody, I hope, and I know everybody had a great week, of course. I hope everybody got things done. Hope everybody got things that they've been believing for, achieving, and most importantly, staying focused. We know that distractions do come. We know that. We know distractions come to throw you off course. When you got a purpose at hand, when you got a mission at hand, you know distractions always going to come. But you, it's about how you respond to those distractions. And I know I think at the late with me, it's called the difference between reacting and responding. If you react to a situation, the situation and the person control you. But if you respond to the, if your situation, you, you are in control. So we want to work on being more re- responsive more than react. But that's another broadcast. Tonight is about our guest tonight. She's an up-and-coming singer. Um, she's making moves. She's from my hometown, of course, in Mobile, Alabama. Now, she now resides in Dallas, Texas, just as I reside here in Dallas, Texas. Um, she's busy. Um, she's a mother, artist. She's doing a lot of great work. She has a lot of music already out on different media platforms. And she took time out of the busy schedule to hang out with us here on the podcast. So I just want to welcome Lakey. Welcome to Walking This Way In Fact with Podcast. Thank you for taking time out to be the skit to hang out with me and the team here, of course. We got some questions for you about your music, things of that nature, of course. So you already introduced yourself. So once again, thank you for taking time to be the schedule to hang out with us. We got some Q&A. We're going to chop it up with you tonight. So once again, for those who miss out, go ahead and introduce yourself again to those who are tuning in. Hello, thank you so much for having me. And my name is Lakey. I am singer, songwriter, mother. I um, picked up jewelry making within the past year. So yeah, that's me in a nutshell. And I'm excited to get into this interview and tell you guys all about what's been going on. (laughs) Awesome stuff. And I know you made a transition from our hometown of Mobile to the state of Texas, the Lone Star State. We know it's great opportunities here. I love it here, of course. I met um, Coach Shea, which also she trains with me as well. You know, getting healthy, maintaining a, a healthy body. That's what it's all about. Especially me being at the age of 40 now. So that's very important to me is being in health. So I got a question for you. How did you get started in music? Is that something that you always want to do? Do you come from a musical family? How did it all come about? So not many people do music in my family. I'm like one of the first to pursue it the way I do. Um, I found out, I got it from a granddaddy that I never met. Um, But yeah, so that's where I started. I started when I was a little child. I started um, young, just singing, making up songs and just really just, um, yeah, it's just about how I feel. That's usually how it just came to me, just Songs would just download in my brain. But I started taking it really, really serious um, in my adulthood. I just, you know, I just gave it a shot. It was always a dream of mine. And so something was like, you need to go for it. Like, you know, and so I went through the ropes, you know, making music videos, um, you know, and I really dug deep. (laughs) So I'm so so far in, I can't go back. Awesome. And I know you say you recorded videos. So I know a lot of musicians, they, they, they get started off in church. So did you always sing? Did you go to church? I did. Church, I did. Like that? um, that's actually one of the first, like, beginning stepping stones was my Pastor Cox at Church of Life on, um, on South Wilson Avenue down there in Pritchard. But when I tell you, like, that's where I really, yeah, they saw it in me. It's something that was kind of like, I couldn't run away from it. You know, I tried. I was a little shy. But um, he always ended up putting a microphone in my hand every Sunday. Then he was like, what else can you do? Then he ended up putting the drumsticks in my hand. So I played drums for the church. And that's not a lot of people know that. (laughs) That's something that's like a hidden fun fact about me as I played drums for years at Church of Life. So I was a little drummer, drummer girl. Awesome. And I know Anna and I know Coach Shea got some questions for you. And of course, you know I'm always a gentleman. So, Anna, you have anything you want to ask, I guess? 
Of course, you say you play drums. So you play, yes, play the girl. set or tenor, what you play? I played the set. <laughs> okay. I played the set. You know, like, a, I so I wasn't the best. Now, I wasn't the best drummer. My thing was I could keep a beat. I couldn't make my way around the drum, but I could keep a beat. <laughs> okay, because, girl, I don't have any rhythm at all, but it did catch my attention when you said, you acquired your talent from your grandfather you never even met. Now, so. yes, um, okay, so let me explain this. Like, that's, okay, so the first time I did meet him, but it was at his funeral. I was asked to sing at my grandfather's funeral. Now, before this, I haven't heard really good things about my grandfather. You know, you know, classic story of the Black man oppressed, you know, you know, I shouldn't go into details, but I don't, you know, there's not really good, you know, around his name. So when I sung at his funeral, though, it just really stuck with me because I had heard all these stories. And I was like, you know, those are stories. You know, I didn't really know the man that I was singing. It just piqued my interest. So I dug deep and come to find out he was a singer. Here I am thinking that nobody sung in my family. Like I got this gift from nobody. Um, and the stories are, he sounded like Al Green. And so, yeah, girl, I said, I wish I would have been a fly on the wall to hear my granddaddy sing. But when I, told, when I tell you, like, it's just some kind of connection there with him. And like, it's kind of like I'm pick, picking up the torch. See, like my grandma, she would always say that, um, yeah, he was, he could sing, but he wasn't that smart. <laughs> she, she would say that, she was like, he could sing, but he wasn't that smart. And he took us all the way to Detroit and he didn't even make it. And my grandma hates music, girl. Like she, but you know, it's like, a, you ever seen that movie Coco? Okay, it's a Disney movie called Coco. I know that's like so childish to me, but there's a <laughs> Disney movie called Coco and his grandmother hated the fact that he wanted to do music because she was so scarred by what the grandfather had done, you know? Come to find out that's what he was supposed to be doing all along was the music that his family kind of just kept him away from. So although like um, my grandmother, like, you know, she was like, oh, you can sing, you know, but she wasn't too enthused on the idea that I got fixated on singing and like I was really gunning for it. But in my reality, I just feel like I'm carrying on this this feat, if that makes sense. <laughs> I know that was a, a long story, sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're absolutely fine. Like, I like the backstory because we want to know how did you get started? What's your background? Right. You know? <laughs> and then now we want to know what's next, where are you going? So if I had to ask you anything, what does the next five years look like for you? Well, I feel like I'm really excited. You guys, I just turned 30 May 8th. Hey, I'm birthday. not ashamed. I just turned the big 3-0, the dirty 30. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you, um, it wasn't, if you would have asked me that like last year sometime, it wouldn't have been clear. But the fact that I'm able to tell you in five years, girl, I see myself um, being a successful business owner. Um, I recently found out that I can make jewelry. Like, so I really, um, and it's helped me a lot as well through my own personal battles. Um, I kind of picked up, I don't know if you're familiar with crystals and stones. So I fell in love when I found out that this helps me with my emotional and my spiritual body. I fell in love with holistic care. I fell in love with um, just, the whole lifestyle it was just a whole lifestyle change and so um yeah I started getting really good at making like these pieces of jewelry and it just kind of just came to me it started with waist beads started branching off into necklaces bracelets and then next thing you know I have a whole business and I'm doing pop-up shops here in Dallas so I mean I honestly um I took a small small break from the music just because it's only one me, it's only one me and I can't, you know, and I found myself um, chasing my dream really heavy to where that's all I focused on. So sometimes you have to like regroup, you know, and just step back a minute and just analyze everything. And so that's what I've done. I stepped back, analyzed it, and I'm going to focus on my jewelry for a minute because I really want my jewelry to be the, 
bring life into my music, if that makes sense. I have plans to intertwine them, <laughs> if that <laughs> makes sense. So I focus on a bit at a time. So in five years, definitely I want to be um, a household name. Um, I just want to, I just want to heal through music. I want to heal, bring something different to the world, bring a different aspect. Cause every, my music is very much so genuine. It's stuff that, you know, sometimes I, I'm like, oh, that don't make sense, but you know what? I'm going to throw it in there anyway. <laughs> it might, somebody could relate to it. So I just want to overall just be the ultimate healer, you know? Awesome. And um, turning my pain into gold. So and that's what it's all about. Cause I know the transition here. How was the transition from you? I know like I said we're from Mobile, Alabama. We know Mobile is a small market. Coming into Dallas, Dallas is a much bigger market. And you come in all types of people who are very creative, business owners, you name it. So how had that transition from Mobile to Dallas been? So it hasn't been smooth for me just because I'm very sporadic. <laughs> like I'm the type of person, like I'll try to make something work. Like, and if it don't work, I kind of just get up and go. <laughs> it's not all the time a good thing, but this time I just literally did not plan moving to Dallas. This was just literally like a month in and I was like, you know what? I think we should like redirect. We're going to Dallas. I don't know what's in Dallas. I don't know, you know, anything about Dallas. I visited Houston and I said, I'm going to visit Dallas one time before I come. And I ended up loving it. But then when I moved, the transition has been really, really tough. Just literally, it's, it's, it's the laws on the road. Literally, <laughs> it's the, the driving. Yeah. It, I, I run into like, then I racked up all these tolls. I had no idea about tolls. <laughs> <laughs> like you know driving through the streets on Alabama there's no tolls I done racked up tickets <laughs> I done had the car towed like I've been having the worst time just learning Texas rules okay <laughs> don't be riding dirty I don't want them to, to come and arrest you okay before Girl. you get picked up make sure you tell us how we can purchase your jewelry <laughs> to support you and purchase your music, okay? Yes, well, you know, ma'am. <laughs> well, you know they got a sign that said, don't miss with Texas. That is so true. Don't when miss I tell with you, Texas. Yes, they yes. I'm, when I tell you, I'm like, ooh. But when I tell you overall, though, other than that, other than that issue, there's so much to do. There's so much to do. There's so, I saw Erica Badu. Like, come on now. That's like a once in a lifetime. I was so close to her, I could touch her. Like, <laughs> so that, I've had some amazing experiences here. I did start a band here. But you know, like, like I said, sometimes you have to reevaluate, redirect, and it's just not time yet. It's just not time yet. But when I tell you I got some new music coming, um, I'm starting an album really soon this year. So it's going to be a whole album, and I'm really going to put my all into it, everything I got. So that's what I got coming for you guys, too. <laughs> okay, then. Also, we got Coach Shay. Coach Shay, as is from Dallas, you were born and raised here. So she's a Dallas native. I know she got some Yes, I am. Um, and it's funny that you mentioned Erica Badu because uh, my family has a lot of like close ties with Erica. My uncle used to play Congo uh, for her band. Oh. Yeah, and my cousin used to do the sound for Erica Badu. And even when you come to my studio, like my studio is like right yes. next to a big picture of her, which is she just really iconic in my family, really, uh, really. Yes. Down. She is uh, a very, ooh, well, I tell I, you, she's. Hmm. Yeah, she fed my soul. Yeah, I just absolutely love her. And she just really, uh, really great to be around. I got to be around when I was smaller. So definitely would love to get in, you know, get back into me, you know, meeting up with her again in my adult life. I would love to. Um, my question was, how, like, how long does it usually take you to produce an album? I know, like, sometimes we'll be waiting on people to make an album for like three years. We'd be like, man, when is so-and-so trying to drop an album? So how long did it take you to make an album? Okay, so I am, unfortunately, I am one of those. <laughs> it's only because it'll sit like, 
I'm so particular. I'm so picky. I'm so, I try not to be, I try to let it all flow. But when it comes to your craft and your art, it's kind of like art and you want people to enjoy it too. It's like, I don't, you know, so I find that I got songs that I make for myself. And then I have songs that I make for other people. And you can really tell the difference. Like, even with the stuff that I got out now, um, Higher Place is more of a personal song. But then when you go to How It Feels, I'm kind of like, you know, a whole new vibe. So it's just, I hope it doesn't take me long at all. I hope, like, we get it out this year. I'm hoping, well, I'm going to say next year. I hope to have an album out by next year. And you know, yeah, that's my goal. But, yeah, okay. Okay. but I am one of those people. <laughs> like we haven't heard from Janae Aiko and Janae is like one of my favorite artists. So I, I know her. when this next album drop is going to be crazy. Like right. people that you know, like See, the way. The thing you is. Hurt the weight and you wait. Right. And see, that's the thing with singers. That's the thing with singers. It's like, like if you're a true singer, like you can't just sing anything and just be okay with it. And with, when you put your heart into something, it takes a little bit more time to just kind of, you know, it's like, should I get, it's a lot of decision making. That's really what it is being an artist. Like, should I get personal with you guys? Or should I, should I be uppity? Because I'm not uppity all the time. Like I'm not up all the time. So should I give you guys a little balance? Or should I, should this just be strictly about what I went through this summer? Or, you know, it's just like, it's mm. like decisions, decisions, decisions. And when you don't have a team of people deciding for you and you're just an independent artist, it's, it's like when things kind of, that's when you get kind of budgeting. That's when you get into all the extras that come into like creating a project. So it's really like, it's really it's really hard being an independent artist, but I enjoy the process because it's going to be good. <laughs> it's like the amount of time that I take for this, like it's going to be good. And I, that's why I feel like, I, I feel like I'm just a little bit different than your average singer, you know, just a little bit different. I can, I, I offer more, more soul, more depth more I, I kind of give you surprises you never know to, what to expect with Lakey because like I shot people with my booty cheeks out the last video <laughs> <laughs> like because I never do that I never do that but I said you know what I that's what I felt and that's why I named my EP how it feels because I go off of how I feel it's not really so structured I guess you could say <laughs> People are like, what's your genre? And I'm like, um, neo pop soul RB thing, you know, I'm kind of all of it. So I came up with new neo, new neo, something like that. Have you <laughs> worked with any major, like uh any major artists? Or are you planning to work with some major artists in the future? I definitely um since I saw Erica Badu, I've been getting a sign girl from like <laughs> I've been getting signs from God that Erica Badu needs to be the first one that I work with. But that's just my personal goal and something I've been manifesting. I'm open to working with anybody. Um, Ari Lennox, I love her. Janae Aiko, I love her. But even on a lesser scale, I love Yeba and um, I love a lot of underground artists too. I like her. Like so. that aren't really known, known. Like, Mm -hmm. There's one. Um, there's one that y'all probably have never heard of. I am BDB. I have. I listen to a lot of that kind of. Oh, see, I love her music type of Malaya. Uh huh. Uh, have you heard of Moon Child? I think so. Yeah, I've heard people refer to me as a Moon Child before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I tell you, yeah. yes, that like, I'm definitely like, those are like my I'm. I'm open to anything, like, because you never know, even the local artists, that might be, you know, you never know, you know, y'all might, we might make a song that blow the lid off, you know, so I'm open yeah. to, if it sounds and good. If we go back and look at some of the podcasts that we've had, we've had people on here, we've had, um, 
You know, we had people. I here. already know. I already know. Happy with Trina. Like we we had we had I already know nowadays. So definitely looking forward to you being our next hitter. And we also look forward to getting Bianca back on the podcast soon. Uh so we can kind of run up to date with her and you know, see how it's going with her. Yes. Oh yeah. Most definitely. definitely. And then we had see now um a few weeks ago well. He just released Oh, he's a legend. Yeah, he he used to go in the mobile, so he was on here. Um, very That's interesting. Amazing. It is. And um, I haven't heard any new artists. I know I'm 40 years old. I'm used to the old school. You're so funny. <laughs> no, because I never heard. Um, I still listen to, like, JV, Outkast, UGK, But there's Master nothing P. wrong with that. Look, yeah. I want to link in with Jermaine Dupri so bad. I need a song from him. Like, that would be. I tell the- you. I, I need a Lil song Flip. from Jermaine Dupri. <laughs> <laughs> Lil Flip, T.I. You know, All of them. Nelly, I have to listen to Nelly. Oh, um, Flip? Yeah, Lil Flip, Lil Flip back in the... I don't know if he's still around. Funny. Lil Flip was the same back in the, in the early The 2000s. closest I got, I did work with CeeLo. I don't know if y'all are familiar with CeeLo. Yeah. 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 I, I, I listen to music. Like, I love music. I like, know, girl, because I'm calling out these names, and you're like, yeah, I know. Like, you really, like, dang, you know? Music, like, I listen to pop music. I listen to from the Billy Elliot all the way to, mm-hmm. like, I listen to all the music, the, the reggae hall, the dance hall. So you want to know something? I do, too. You want to know my a dream of mine? <laughs> Don't laugh at me, y'all. So I really love rock music. Like, I'm a... I really love it. So I always wanted a rock band. And I said, one day I'm going to be like, I'm going to have like a rock alias. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody will know it's me. You know, nobody (laughs) will know it's me. But it'll be like a rock band and I'll be like the lead singer. And like, that's, you know. Everybody should do do their rebirth like Lil Wayne did and go total pop type of rock album. Do it. Do it. Just did it. He just did it. He painted his whole face and he went crazy. And he's like, Exactly. Yeah. I'm with it. You okay. know, we started that movement. Tina. It started with Tina. It and started I, with Tina. And I feel like we blend so well. Like, we able to conform to it so well just because, like, we just musically inclined. It we don't do. really have to do with, like, who, like, who it belongs to. It's just like we just can tap into all the genres. Like we tap really it can. in, baby. Yeah, like we're really just able to But play you them. know we are. We're slowly but surely like but when I'm but I'm gonna be real, we need some refreshers. I just feel like we need kind of like so uh, like not so much of some people on the agenda, if you get what I'm saying. Like yeah. There's yeah. a certain agenda that they're pushing and it's just like so we just need some fresh air. Like, I feel like some people need to come in. Like, I can think of a lot of artists that just, even local artists, like, even in Mobile, like, they just need to come pick us up. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, yeah. for real, like, we got so much talent just back in my hometown. Because I'm going to be real, I got the Dallas, and it's not a lot of here. Oh, I no. Cause we go, we go to Atlanta, and we go, we go elsewhere. We don't even stay here because right. we don't make it here. So people in Dallas, they don't make it in Dallas. We make it. We go. That's outside. what I'm finding out. Look, I'm finding that out slowly but surely. But I'm, I'm, but I, cause I'm finding out it's a live scene band here. It's like a live scene here. Yeah, there's you, not there's not a lot of artists in Dallas. Yeah, Dallas would give you all the exposure in the world. Like you can yeah. get a lot of exposure. You can meet a lot of the people. Port of, mm-hmm. a lot of just make a lot of connections. But as far as like, will you will you take off from her? Mm-mm. And that's true. I'm finding that out. I'm really finding that out. <laughs> And but that's what that's what I love about moving around. That's why I'm so glad that I decided to move around because I feel like, yeah, like okay, so we did Dallas. Okay, what's next? Yeah, most people from here they go Atlanta or I love ATL. A lot of people 
migrating to Vegas. I've been seeing some people. Mm-hmm. You know, just like where the things are more popular. I like even for me. Do you want to know where I, I want to move? move though? If, 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 I want to move. I'm trying to move to Jamaica. <laughs> you want to okay. be off the grid? She said, like, "Yeah, I want to be off the grid." I'm I'm seriously not liking the country right now. I don't blame you. If I had it like that, I definitely would. I don't have it like that, but girl, I said, look, I'm going to try to make it like this. <laughs> I got to get out of here. Off the grid either. Yeah, I I'm thinking America ain't for me no more. I think I'm feeling get like a financial coach there. so we can help you set up a financial plan and strategy to escape. Please, yeah. Anna. You know what? <laughs> Thank you. Yes, my my escape to the Bahamas. The, the Bahamas and Jamaica. All that. I want all of that. <laughs> see, I gotta visit there first to see if I wanna live there. Like I know I, it's pretty scary. It's pretty yeah. scary. I wanna visit first. And then I let me know if I wanna live there. Like True. it's a few places I wanna go to just to see if I would actually wanna live. But Oh, I, and you I, wanna know who you know who, who you wanna know who else besides Canada is a great place to live? I heard New Zealand. Me too. Canada is my top choice. Canada is really one of my Canada top Canada is. And, and because their health care is amazing. And you say? At 52 weeks maternity leave for women, I think that's wonderful. That's amazing. Yeah. I was, Canada, I would definitely move But to you know what? That's amazing you mentioned that because I was just talking to somebody. I said, having kids alters your brain chemistry. And I feel... <laughs> Because I have two kids of my own, and I really do truly feel America does not cut women enough slack. We're walking mm. around here with depression and a lot of things that we're dealing with eternally, like young mothers, and um, because your body does a lot of like a flip, a flipperoo, like a flip, and it does some ungodly things <laughs> yeah. Yeah. after you have a baby. So I really feel like um, and that's another thing that I would love to be an advocate for is. Definitely mental health and young women. Yeah. Definitely mothers, especially because um, yeah, it's it's serious. Even in the black, just the black community alone, like the trauma yeah. that we're dealing with. So um, yeah, that I, I, if you guys actually like, I'm telling you, I have a whole bunch of missions, and I'm just praying God like just leads the way, and I can just find my way. What what did they walk in his way? Look at that. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Well, I'll give you and I and I know you mentioned Canada. I always wanted to go visit Canada. I always wanted to go visit Toronto. I plan on doing that probably a couple of years ago. Probably moved here just to go out there and visit. But that's something I plan on doing, just go out there and visit and see how the culture is out there. Cause they say Toronto is kind of like a mini New York City. Yeah, so, they say it's a bigger New York. Like it's like a bigger New York, and it's better. Yeah, I and I know I heard the healthcare is unbelievable. Um, I think if you don't even have insurance, they take care of you out there. Hey, uh, y'all want to y'all want to plan a trip while y'all playing? <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, and Dubai is on the bucket list, and the Maldives is on the bucket list for me. Oh yeah, yeah, because I know <laughs> Obama was trying to implement that when he was in office. He tried to do the, the health care like they do in Canada, but they kind of turned it down. You know, that, so here because they make they make way too much money off the medicine. So why would we get you holistic help if we make more money off of just giving you drugs? <sighs> what you say? I've been in the medical field for ten years. Like I just exited the medical field last year, mm. um, because COVID just had me insanely depressed. And I yeah, just- I could only imagine you were in the forefront during COVID. Yeah, yeah, I definitely was an essential worker. Uh, I worked through the whole COVID thing. I mean, I've worked through all of them, y'all. Like, way back when H1N1 first came out. I right. did the H1N1. I did the swan flu. I did the the um, the um Ebola scare. The West Nile. Wow. Like, I, it's like, I went through it all with y'all. And then we get here. And now I got a, I got a problem. Yeah, it's traumatizing. <laughs> <laughs> it was traumatizing. Like tra- yeah, it was trauma. I'm like, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Definitely, people, when you're dealing with your own issues, now we got world issues that we're dealing with. And, you know, that's why I was really humbled. Like, when I turned, like, my birthday recently, like, I was just really humbled, like, and grateful. Because, yeah. uh, like, I just, just how many people, them, just, you know, just. 
you, yeah. y'all, we ain't making it. And, and lately, it's been so much scares of depression and suicide. That's and, the thing. It's, 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 it's more. Th- Ooh, you had you said something. Y'all, it's so crazy to me. And we're hazards to ourselves. And it's scary. It's scary because it's like I see what they're doing, too. Because I'm like one of these people that be really on the outside looking in. And I'm always, yeah. you know, looking at these smoke mirrors. And it's like. Mm-hmm. Y'all publicizing it so much, it's making people feed into it. It's yep. almost as if it's like making people say, it's okay for it to be my turn next to go. Exactly. It's, yeah, it's almost as like giving it it's the really, okay. Yeah, like, and I'm going to be real. That's honestly okay why I have kind of wanted to get away from the country. <laughs> it's been crazy. <laughs> like, like, I've been feeling my, a little less like I want... Because like, um, yeah, because yeah, I just I just realized I'm I'm the same way. I'm the type, I'm a deep thinker too. I try not to think so deep. And I try to be positive, the main thing, but it but I'm an empath as well. So I feel it's like if anything I feel yeah. what's going on, yeah, I don't like it. It's I, not a good it's I, an eerie I, feeling. It's I, not good. I'm not a big empath, like I don't I don't like what some of my friends are like big empaths like they can yeah, go out. I'm the big empath. It kind of makes me sick for days, like, girl. Do everything. And mm-hmm. I'm not a big empath, but I'm I'm a big an- analyst. Like I'm big on analyzing things. And mm-hmm. when I when I sit back and I look and I be seeing like all these smoke and mirrors, I'll be like, no, like take that down. Like put yeah. that like it's yeah. like we talk about it, we being so manipulated, like Right. With the war. Oh my like God. With the war. With the war. Why that exactly? Um, especially with TikTok and all these other social mm-hmm. media that mm-hmm. be like, we we we're not supposed to show these graphics. We're not supposed to mm-hmm. do all. But it's constantly been. Te- this is the most televised war in history. Pay attention. I feel. Oh, I'm paying attention. Oh, girl. When I this tell you, televised, and it don't supposed to be. How they mm-hmm. have it on TikTok? People recording it, and the real soldiers got their phones on them. And since when is this okay? Like, since when is this supposed to be okay? But it's all been prophesied. So, yeah. if you know, if, if, if like we know, you know, those awake, you know, the ones that are really truly awake, you know, because I don't agree with people trying to be the woke. You have people that think they're awake. You got play, play, wake. Yeah. You don't want to be the wokest in the room, but when I tell you, like, I can tell, like, we are, I'm just glad that God gave us vision to see the real. Yeah. <laughs> and not be it's like, because I very much so, I'm quick to take a break off social media. Because social media does not control my life. You know, um, no. but I know, I know a lot of people where it, a lot of people, it just controls, you know, it's like, they allow not even just social media, just material things, you know, um, name brand things. Like it's just a lot, and yeah. I feel like this is the time to get our house in order. Like you know, that's the main thing is just getting your house in order. Like I think I feel like people lose losing their focus on what we really supposed to be doing. Yes, so, and, and like Furman was saying, distractions like. It's the distractions. Like you can, you can be on the path, but then mm-hmm. your choices can take you either you you gonna veer to the right. Choices. Path, yeah, your your decision. So it it been behooving me how people condone certain decision making and mm-hmm. making things so wrong. Be okay, and how people and it's like, the people at the top. Yeah, it's the they, people at the top they, they compare negatives. What yeah. is this? <laughs> Like you, it's a crazy world, but yeah. I, you know that's why I love my music. Like I be making stuff, but I make. I can't wait to give you guys more. I don't give mm-hmm. you guys enough, um, <laughs> honestly, just because I'm a, um, I'm very much so picky over my music. I try not to be so picky. So, but like I talk a lot about that, even in just higher place. I just talk about, you know, the world, just the being in the world, you know, where you have to maintain. Peace, you know, you have to maintain peace, but it's not here on earth, you know, so you really have to go within. Right, you have to, and that's what we've been talking about lately on the show, um, living within. We are spiritual beings, 
in the human body. And we've just been programmed to just live in the physical, but not mm-hmm. live in the spiritual realm. That's why we just limit ourselves to what we see, mm-hmm. hear, taste, smell, and that's it. That's how we've been programmed. But we've never programmed how to live within. Because the change starts on the inside, not on the outside. We want to change the outside, but how can we change the outside? We don't change the inside. Exactly. So that's why Paul said, do not be conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We never know the good and self-perfect will. So it's a mind thing we have to operate in. Mm-hmm. And we have to change. That's why I keep the old wine in new wine skin. It's impossible. It's going to burst. So we have to constantly evolve. We, we're always growing because we're supposed to be spiritual. So we always got to grow. Always. To evolve. And you made, you said something um, the key earlier about regrouping, just mm-hmm. taking a step back. And in times, God allow us to take a step back. Even Apostle Paul said, examine ourselves. We have to examine ourselves. Mm-hmm. On a regular basis, so the, that whole paradigm shift, we have to get out of that. And like you said, people are waking up. Some are not everybody, but some. Yeah. But um, really coming to awareness, our awareness. But you know what? By us having conversations like this, that's mm-hmm. what brings awareness. You know. Yeah. So most definitely, and that's very important. I heard something yesterday on online. You know how you write stuff out? Yeah. I heard something very, okay, I heard this. You write out, okay, my name is such and such. You write out, I live at such and such place. You write out, I write out this type of car I drive. This who, I, you know, you write these things out to where you want to be at in life. Mm-hmm. Eventually, it's going to manifest if it gets in the subconscious mind. So, eventually, it's going to manifest. Because we energy. Everything is energy. So, oh, yeah. if we're in a negative state, that when negative I- energy is going to come in. It's going to draw all types of stuff. It's going to create everything. It's going to manifest itself. But we start getting to that positive, getting more emotion involved in where we want to go. Mm-hmm. That it Okay, it has to open up because we are creative beings. So, that creativity has to open yes. up yes. in order to, 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 to manifest itself. So that was And you want to know what? And Go you want to know what? Let me add to that. And rejection is okay because sometimes rejection saves you from a lot. You, you know, I'm, I learned that. I learned because um, I, I, I always used to, you know, I tried out for American Idol. I tried out for The Voice, you know. I, you know, videos don't go viral you know so you get these illusions that you know you're not good enough that you're not um you know but i realized that it's god's time it's god's time um we can't force nothing and rejection is okay that's how we learn that's how you grow you know that's it it builds character Hey. Yep, it sure does it, it gives you character. more to tell a bigger story to tell <laughs> as that off of firming in that writing, y'all, like writing, I don't care how cliche it is. I don't care. I don't care. Writing is so powerful, y'all. Like, Mm -hmm. literally, it is so powerful. I'm telling y'all. Every time that I write something down, when I write it, it's law. And I tell people this all the time. They come in contact with me. When you write something, you make it a law. It then becomes a law. So now it has to happen, right? Mm-hmm. So it, it, be, it amazes me. Like, I'll sit and I'll write people that I might want to write people I want to work with. Or I might write down people that I, I got to reach out to. And before I even do this, these people be done contact me or reached out to me like, I, it's almost as if you're summonsing them. Y'all, if, if it makes sense, it almost, like when people be like manifesting, write it down. Like it really will happen. Mm-hmm. And like Furman was saying, pro, so, pro, pro, and I'm going to get, uh-huh. yeah, I'm going to tell you guys a step further. Um, so bay leaves, bay leaves are um, just great things to have. Just, um, I know people cook with them, but that's yeah. a very, very strong tool for you to write. Um, you could you can use your intention and you can write um things that you don't want. 
You can either like, tell, like I know I had to write depression. I don't want depression. You know, just write a few words on there that you're not unhappy with. And you burn that bay leaf and it, it kind of like, it's like a release. Mm. It's like a release of energy, a release of negative energy, negative things. Mm. And so that's something that I love to do as well. But that goes back to writing, just writing, just the power of writing. Yeah, that's it. Right. writing words, writing words, and you know, you speak those things to be as they were. Right. And, you know, because like I said, once again, we get so caught up in the in the physical. You know, if somebody look at their bank account, they look at where is that right now. Okay, they get discouraged, they get in fear. Mm -hmm. They work, what's going on the outside world? The news, the news are already All there. That. So we get. I don't even watch the news. I don't even know what's be going on. So you're, I don't even know. What's, I really don't because the news is so negative. It's so it is. Yeah, it gets in your subconscious mind, and that's the way on when that fear come in, and you mm -hmm. get scared. You know, I got time for all that. Uh, and then we limit ourselves. Who want to be limited? Because I was there before. But you limit yourself, and you realize, okay, I'm creating this stuff in right. my own life the way I've been programmed. Now I got to be mm -hmm. unprogrammed in order to experience that newness of life because I believe we should get better in life. God intended us to have a better life. More and oh. more you get better, to strive to get better. So that's what mm -hmm. it's all about, striving to get better. I know you've mentioned you took a break from music for a little while, but I know you'll be coming back. Because even C now okay. mentioned that too as well, how he you know, didn't really take it serious as much, but he got back into the fold of taking it seriously. So take a break from that. So what you're doing the jury and everything and all this creativity. So my question is on this. Where and you, let me see what I want to say. Help me out with this one. I don't want to be a blank. So where <laughs> basically, um, when am I gonna pick the music back up? When are you gonna pick the music back up? And yeah, and like how you plan to, to in, intertwine like all the right. create. Oh, so how I <laughs> intertwine? Um, so I found out a big thing with me. So Lakey, I'm gonna just tell y'all. Um, Lakey is a big dreamer. So I be wanting big videos. I be wanting like, y'all, that last video, how I feel, I wanted a BAPS theme. I wanted a mansion. I wanted the, um, you know, I wanted a homeless scene, kind of like a rags to riches, okay. whole story. Like I wanted a whole movie. But I was like, dang, I have to be realistic because I got bills too. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> and I'm an independent artist. I can't be just breaking my you know, bank every single time. So how is the key going to make money? Mind y'all, I'm going to be transparent as heck right now. I cannot keep a nine to five. Mind y'all, Lakey can't keep no job. So I tried college three times. So how is Lakey going to make some money for herself? So I found out <laughs> with these hands and just a little bit of time and patience and love, I can make jewelry and it really looks good and it's sellable. So that's literally how I plan to fund my career. Because the yeah. money gonna come. Um, they right. said the, the Bible said, write the vision, make it plain. Who right. so read it, run with it, will not tear it. So the money mm -hmm. will come, mm -hmm. it always will come. A lot of times it's all about trusting God in the process. It See is. That fear that's comes in. The fear of, oh, I got bills to pay. I got See, eat. and that's, and, that's exactly it, what was going on. I was thinking, it, I was thinking too much. Yeah. <laughs> See, that, it, it's that whole paradigm shift because we've been programmed to live, I mean, what we see, taste, mm -hmm. hear, and smell. So we've been programmed that way. And if you talk to people, okay, you ask somebody, I want to do this, we'll, we'll figure out or, how you get the money to do this. So that's how we've been programmed. We've mm -hmm. been programmed to live with you Remember back in the day growing up, we had a wild imagination. Right. God gave us that imagination to imagine these great things. We mm -hmm. didn't worry about nothing. We had no care in the world. But as you get start getting older, mm -hmm. until you get out of that imagination. Get hey, and let me so, tell y'all, I was a wedding singer before this. So let okay. me, God led me. That's another thing that God led me to do because I know, y'all, that's all I know how to do is <laughs> sing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, that's it. You know, some people, you know, they're just good at everything. And literally, <laughs> I'm not. I'm just good at singing and making jewelry. And so, yep. um, 
Yeah, they, God has provided a way. God has definitely is. provided a way. I mean, it's all about trusting him because he tells them to take no thought for tomorrow and tomorrow will take care of itself. He yeah. already worked that thing out. We just got to trust him. See, once again, we got to break that paradigm shift. Mm-hmm. We, we try to live for tomorrow when we should be living for the day. We yeah. worry about, oh, I got rent coming up. We worry about all this stuff. We got all the tools in us. Everything yeah, bring, is in us. As that, we bring all that negative energy in. Mm-hmm. One of why we keep the same result. We got to break that paradigm shift. Break it. And it takes a, it's a process, not overnight, but it's a process. Uh, mm-hmm. Break away from people. Break away from people that's negative. Break away from people that's mm-hmm. limiting themselves. Uh, television yeah. wise, like you said, you said you don't mind taking a break from social media. Sometimes you take a break from social media. I sure cut the don't. Instagram off, cut the YouTube off, cut all this stuff off. Mm-hmm. So it does turn out, it does wear down on us. Right. Because we have to stay in touch with reality. That's mm-hmm. the thing, right? We have to stay in touch. It's very important, you know. I can't um, get caught up so much in my dream that I forget that I got two kids to feed, you know? <laughs> like, right. So, um, yeah, I'm a very realistic artist. And I, that's what I love about being transparent. Like, you can't expose me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll expose myself before, you know, just being transparent and being right. real, you know? Just that's how I keep it. That's how it's just easier to live that way. And I believe that too. You know, you gotta have a great lifestyle. Your mm-hmm. lifestyle you gotta match with what you say. And I believe what you say. Believe in that. And like I said, reality and transparent. Family comes first. You gotta take care of family, you gotta take, you care, gotta of take care of family. Um, because that's your next generation, it's your children. Mm-hmm. So you gotta prepare them for the next, they are the next generation. You gotta prepare yeah. them as they get but y'all the got family. me a singer on my hand now. Okay. hmm I got me a little one. I, I said, uh oh, and hey. I'm going to live through you indirectly. <laughs> she don't know it yet. I don't think she mind, but my little girl, she got a voice on me. Awesome. I got little videos of her. I get little, I catch them every now and then. <laughs> a built one out. <laughs> awesome. awesome. And um, I know, like I said, you're here in Dallas as well. I know you're doing jury. So besides, what's the next thing for Lakeith? Like, um, so the next thing for me is um, getting you guys this album. I'm hopefully going to get that soon. Um, definitely becoming a homeowner. Um, I'm, that's what I'm really honing in on. I'm tired of these apartments, y'all. I'm so tired. <laughs> so this is going to be like um, the year for me to focus on building the life that I want and the life that I You know, and I've recently just tapped into this energy. I guess you could say it's coming with 30, you know, being 30, 30, 30. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Because I was not thinking like this, right? So, yeah, it's just really like, I just want to tap into some goddess energy. And I just want to give you guys some great bomb music. I want to give you guys, um, yeah, because I have a lot of experiences that I necessarily can't really communicate just through you know, me just sitting here right. telling the story because it'll be too depressing. So, mm. or it'll be too much for you guys. So I would rather just, that's how I communicate this. Just, if you want to know something about me, listen to the key. Awesome. It's awesome listen. stuff. And mm-hmm. it's, it's that maturity, that growth, of course. Like I said, I turned 40 on April, to, on April the 23rd. And I, feel, and I feel a difference in it. But I don't know, it's a study that came out that that. The average male don't start maturing to the age of 43. That the average male don't hear his financial up starting mm-hmm. to the age of 40. And I guess because you just getting started, Lita. Yeah, I'm just getting started. So yeah, it's a see, process. It, see, that's another thing. I I felt the same thought being you know 30. Like oh, they don't want to hear my old self thing, or you know, I'm getting old. It's not for me, you know. I'm getting too old. You're never too old. I think nah. that's literally. I think that's literally. Um, it's God's time. It's God's it is. time. You know, and you got to think with God. God is eternal. He don't see yeah. time. We see time because we in this exactly. in the human body. It's the that's thing the about. human in us. And that's it. We got to get out of the humans. Even yep. though we are human, we got to get past that. We got to get past that. 
We do, it's still done for it. I posted Queen Latifah today. She had an awesome story. And you know who else? Tabitha. Look at Tabitha Brown. I love her. Oh, I Look just, at her story. Oh, my God. I just, lo- just want to hug her. And I just know she smells like cocoa butter. Oh, yeah. and, oh my gosh. I just love her. But her, love story, her. her story. Her story is great. Her. Yeah, that story, like the yeah. fact that, like you know, that's that just goes to show it's God's timing. It's not, it's not when we want it. You know, exactly. it's not <laughs> if we had it that way, then I guess we would be a millionaires right now. You know, and we all want a million be- dollars right now. So right, <laughs> and but it's, it's God's time. It's gonna, exactly. it's gonna keep going. It's you keep going. Get, you can't. We get have re- certain things you gotta learn well before doing. you. Yeah. It's certain things you got to learn before you become a millionaire. Because if true. I just have a million dollars, I would not know what to do with it. I'm going I'm to spend it all up and then I'm going to be looking stupid. That's so true. you have if to I go say, Anna, look, I'm going to let us know once we get that million, how we going <laughs> to invest and flip it so we will never go broke again. <laughs> Come on, girl, oh. tell them. We're going to set up <laughs> those critical accounts, okay? Gonna, oh, Anna, gonna... I can't wait to talk to you outside of this. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely help... let's connect, okay? We... Home ownership. We're Home creating ownership. millionaires. Yes, ma'am. Indeed. I'm with that. So that was, like I said, God's time to call it. Like I said, just, you know what made me think about that too? When Abraham wanted a child, God was it, God said he was going to have a child. Then he got so caught up in a physical of his age. It's not it's not about how we see it. It's all about how God already sees it. He's eternal. We look at timing. So like you say, it's always God timing. When we get so called, oh a certain age, I'm too old, I'm too this. No, it's he don't see that at all. He he bypassed all he's eternal. He's a spiritual being. So he's trying to get us there too a little past the physical and tap into the spiritual and I read this too once you tap into that you can set your goals you can achieve your goals a whole lot better mm-hmm. and it's, it's all about growth and elevation that's all we want to do grow and elevate in life and that's the most beautiful thing about it so we, I know we pressed for time we had a great conversation here on the podcast so the kid you have any final remarks you want to leave with the list of audience because it's going to be on the Anchor podcast it's going to be on Spotify as well as going to be on YouTube so they can always go back and listen to it Well, I want to thank everyone for having me today. And I just want everyone to know that life is going to get hard. It's going to be ugly. But you know what? We got this. No matter what, stay strong, um, stay encouraged, stay focused. And yeah, let's let's just um, be the greatest, become the ancestors that we aspire to be. (laughs) Tell everybody how we can stay connected to you and support you. Oh, yes, ma'am. So you guys can follow me. Um, I have a I have an IG page, Lakey Music Official. So you guys can look me up there. Um, also, you can stream me on Spotify, um, L-A apostrophe K-E-Y. You can stream me on Spotify. You can stream me everywhere and also on YouTube. I have two music videos up. And yeah, you guys get on board because I got some some stuff coming. A lot of stuff. Oh, yeah, you guys can buy my jewelry. I also make, I customize holistic jewelry. So I work with things like amethyst. I work with clear, um, clear quartz, rose quartz, whatever you want, tiger's eye. You let me know what your vision is, what you want, what type of healing you're looking for. You looking for a little education on what stones do for you and what they work, how they work. You can go on my website at lalascustomcreations.com. And okay. awesome, awesome stuff. We love, love your energy, love your vibe, of course, and it's a beautiful thing. Thank you, Lakee, for taking time out, hanging out with us. Great conversation, of course, here on the podcast. And we're going to be back next Tuesday night. Same bad time, same bad channel. For those who don't know, that's from the Batman TV show. They just come on back in the day in the 60s. That way, that wasn't even, I wouldn't even thought about it then. But it was still coming on when I was born. So we want y'all to have a great night. Take what we said tonight. The most powerful thing we heard, one of the things was regroup. So a lot of time, God will allow us to regroup, take a step back, re-examine ourselves, and come back 1,000% stronger than ever before. So 
we want to say thank you for that word, the key on that word tonight on regroup. So that's the most powerful thing, regroup. So yeah. God is regrouping us in this season. So mm-hmm. y'all have a great night. We're going to see y'all here next week here on Walking This Way, Impact Voice Podcast. Remember, reach your goals, set your goals, be encouraged, don't be discouraged, don't allow people to influence you, and don't allow people, don't, and don't be a slave to other people's opinion. we all been there before. Will it come up again? Yes, it will. But we have to overcome people's opinion. Be who you are, be who God made you to be, and sky's the limit. We'll see y'all next week. Peace, everybody. Good night. Bye. Bye.